things fairies are purported to do is, you know, grievously harm or outright murder humans, um, enslave them, drive, hum- drive humans mad, um, or even some of them are known to eat people, um, you know, which isn't limited to just those fairy beings that would be considered more of what is called in, in Scottish tradition, the unseely, quote unquote, right. fairies. Um, even the ones considered more likely to be friendly to humans are capable and will oftentimes in the folklore folklore harm or terrorize humans um and you know they're kind of considered to have these very godlike powers um so they're capable of quite a lot a lot of things um and you know the things that you find in the folklore um some of which i just mentioned are still problems that people face today hello and welcome to the spirit box podcast where we explore folklore magic the world of the spirits and everything in between For today's show, we welcome Rose Auroras. Rose is a sorceress, a seer, specializing in fairy and elf-related issues and spiritual needs. She is part of a spiritual lineage of Celtic origin, but is also trained in other spiritual traditions including trolldom and hoodoo conjure. Many people encounter issues or have spiritual needs related to the good people or the elves. Some may experience fairy-related activity, whether positive or negative. Additionally, there are those brave individuals who seek out that working relationship with the fair folk or elves, but are uncertain on how to do so. And addressing these kind of queries is really Rose's area of expertise. Now, it's a fascinating show, and, and Rose goes into fantastic detail I really enjoyed the conversation. Fantastic detail around her work and the nuances of it. We get into what these beings look like or what can happen when a fairy is uh, romantically inclined towards an individual, has interest in individuals, and how folklore is pretty accurate when it comes to describing what these experiences are like and what these entities are like. Now in the Plus Show, we get into hybridism and how these entities can manifest and what they may look like. And Rose tells us, tells us about her fascinating experiences with scrying and what she has seen surrounding people who have availed of her service, including that category of spirits so familiar to listeners of the spirit box, the Dark Man. Now, this is a, a fantastic conversation. It really hits the spirit box bullseye uh, repeatedly. And I think it's something that regular listeners, the, uh, regular listeners of the show are going to enjoy. So if you want to hear the Plus Show, simple thing to do is to click the link to read link below, go to the Patreon and sign up as a Plus member. It costs five bucks, less than a cup of coffee. And you get the whole back catalog of spirit box shows and a host of extras. And uh, come and join the community on our Discord. Now, while I have you, my book on the Dark Man has been released both in the US and the rest of the world now. So if it's an avenue that you're interested in exploring or you just want to support me in another way, then do pick up a copy of the book. You can find it in any good online bookstore. Um, Just simply look for Song of the Dark Man by Dara Mason and it'll pop up. For those of you who have already done so, I really appreciate it. Thank you for supporting me and my endeavors. Okay, that's enough for me. Let's get on with the show. Okay, um, Rose Aurora, it is really cool to have you on the Spirit Box podcast. You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for ha- having me. I'm, I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> uh, a pleasure, a pleasure. And um to, to get the show on the road, could you tell the, the people a, a little bit about yourself and uh, your practice and, and what you do? Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, I, first and foremost, I'm a fairy seer. Um, and uh, I've sometimes kind of called myself, referred to myself as a fairy worker, um, as I have, uh, I work with the fair folk um, and kind of act as an intermediary between uh, fairies and humans. Um, that's kind of, uh, one of the main things that I do, um, services wise for people. Um, I'm also, uh, formally trained as an apprentice under Johannes Gordbeck in the Scandinavian system of folk magic and sorcery called trolldom. Um, so that's, uh, kind of my two main traditions. 
Um, but uh, I have had training and some initiations into other stuff, um, some of which I have to kind of keep more secret than others. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, those are kind of what I'm I'm mostly known for. And uh, and as a as a worker, um, as a spiritual worker, my main focus is kind of, as I said, helping people with fairy, elf, uh, troll related troubles. Um, I conduct readings, healing, spell work. Um, and I also teach slash mentor people in the magical arts. So that's that's kind of a little summary there. <laughs> awesome. And um, and uh, you, you did a reading for me uh, a few months back, which was fantastic. Yes. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> really cool. Um, and actually, one of the one of the, the things that came up was uh, a, a, an image you got of of the dark man, uh, yeah. which subsequently has ended up in the book. So, um, yeah, that was yeah. really cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. Um, so to to start kind of pulling pulling the threads on on, on your work and kind of your areas of, of expertise and practice, um, how did how did this arise for you? How did um, you start to work with um, the fairy folk? Mm -hmm. um, so the kind of the origin question, <laughs> um, it's a little bit of a difficult question to answer in a lot of detail, um, as I do have a lot of um, secrecy taboos that I have to adhere to within sure. the, my fairy tradition, which is my main tradition. Right. Um, but I can say a few things. Um, the absolute simplest answer is that I was actually born into this tradition. Um, as I mentioned, uh, my fairy tradition, or I might have mentioned, um, it is of a Celtic origin. Um, oh. It is a closed tradition, one that is not explicitly named to the public, such as like, you know, it's not like Cult of Sabati or something like that. That's kind right. of um, has like an outer court sort of thing with public books and things like that. Um those who are familiar with what would be termed like traditional witchcraft, um, whether it's in like a coven structure or lines of family lineage, will be familiar with the idea um, that there are quite a few lineages, lineages and traditions that exist completely hidden from outsiders mm -hmm. and the public. Um, and usually like privacy and secrecy are of utmost, utmost importance in many of those groups and families. Right. Um, now, the, the trolldom I can speak a little bit more to. Um, I was drawn to Norse slash Germanic practices quite a few years ago, um, initially because of the elves, um, and as well as having some ancestral connections to those practices. Uh, I had already had experience there because of crossover training with my fairy tradition and interactions with beings I would class as Ulfar or elves. Um, and from there, I was brought to the gods as well as other spirits in Norse practice. Um, and and then I met my teacher, Johannes Gordbeck, and uh, he became my mentor in the children's tradition. And I studied under him as an apprentice. And um, yeah, so that's that's kind of uh, that's kind of the basic summary. I know I know I know people want more juicy details <laughs> about some of this stuff, but um, yeah. usually, you know, that's why I'm kind of more um, uh, forward and outward about like my trolldom training and things like that because. Uh, for those who don't know, like Johannes has um, a book called Trolldom, um, and uh, he's kind of considered like um, an authority on, uh, you know, those Scandinavian traditions. Right. So um, I can kind of, you know, be able to point to him as like a public figure of like, mm -hmm. you know, this is this is my uh, more kind of public figure that I've trained under and I can kind of talk about. So cool, cool. And um, I mean, I, I know absolutely nothing really about the that tradition so i'd be delighted to to, to go down that road um, sure. but i guess to help orientate people um who probably would be more familiar in terms of uh what the expectation might be around um the the, the kind of fairy traditions to to mm -hmm. degree, obviously um what's what's the um and, and there may not be, but what, what are the differences? Um, uh, like, how would you separate elves from fairies or, and, um, and, mm. kind of, and like, what, what is trolled in this two, two kind of chunky questions there, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no problem. You know, yeah. Um, so I guess, I guess one thing that might be helpful is to kind of first define like what I would, um, what I would say a fairy is, uh, which is, you know, a supernatural, 
being a race of supernatural beings uh, found within, you know, Celtic folklore. Um, and uh, that's kind of the, the most bare bones definition. You know, they right. have magical powers. Uh, they're usually considered to be immortal. Um, there's usually a lot of similarities between, um, you know, the various fairy beings that you find in the in the Celtic countries. Um, and there is similarities uh, with, you know, the elves of Scandinavia. Um, so I, I would say basically it's kind of the same definition when it comes to elves. Okay. Um, you know, a supernatural race of beings found within Germanic myth and folklore, um, especially within Scandinavia and Iceland, believed to have magical abilities and powers. Um, so, you know, and and while somewhat enigmatic, the elves are undoubtedly a staple of Germanic myth. They appear in the Eddic poems, various sagas, and quite often within the oral and collective folklore of Germanic peoples. Um, and I would say that they... I, I generally kind of refer to them as basically the cousins, the, the Germanic cousins of the fairies, okay. um, because there are so many similarities between them. Um, it's just kind of, you know, the same thing that uh, there are humans in America and there are humans in Europe, <laughs> you know, and they can be quite closely connected through uh, ancestry, DNA, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of the, a similar thing. Um, what was the other question? Oh, what what is trolldom? Um, yeah. So trolldom... Um, is a collective term for uh, a folk magic and sorcery found within Scandinavia. Um, it is the magic of everyday people as well as the magic of specialist practitioners. Um, so there is still to this day sort of a sense of apprehension around the word and idea of trolldom. Uh, you know, for many years, trolldom was kind of considered something very much aligned with with like witchcraft or something kind of diabolical right um however many troll cunning people are also the village healer and intercessor between humans and spirits of all types so there's usually kind of a healthy dose of fear around trolldom and its practitioners in scandinavia um you know as it's well known that trolldom can be used both to heal and to harm which you know on, on a similar note could be said of most folk magic practices, right? Like yeah. they, they're kind of yeah. um, dual handed in that regard. So, um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of a cursory definition of fairies, elves and, and trolldom. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And in, in terms of um, some of your work, I mean, I know you, you, you help people who have um, issues with, with some of these, these beings. Um mm -hmm. Can you talk to that as to kind of what some of those issues might be and and if it's permissible to do so, could you tell us about some of the cases? Yeah. Um, what are some of the dangers, I guess, is kind of uh, a good way to start. Right. Um, you know, taking even kind of a, a, a cursory look at the folklore of both the British Isles as well as lore of the elves in Scandinavia. Um, one can see that fairies and elves are, or at the very least, have potential to be quite dangerous. Um, you know, pop culture, as well as the Victorian era depictions of the good folk have kind of diminished them quite a bit in size and power. Um, but for centuries before that, these beings were looked upon as having immense power and skill. Um, and within the folklore, some of the things fairies are purported to do is, you know, grievously harm or outright murder humans, um, enslave them drive human drive humans mad um or even some of them are known to eat people um you know which isn't limited to just those fairy beings that would be considered more of what is called in in scottish tradition the unseely quote unquote right. fairies um even the ones considered more likely to be friendly to humans are capable and will oftentimes in the folklore folklore harm or terrorize humans um and you know they're kind of considered to have these very godlike powers um, so they're capable of quite a, lo a lot of things. Um, and, you know, the things that you find in the folklore, um, some of which I just mentioned, are still problems that people face today. Um, you know, a lot of times um, people will even have things like uh, what they would just consider a haunting in their home, um, but is maybe a bit more um, uh, over the top, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, and so that's one thing that people will call in somebody like me. Um, obviously I do do work with things like human dead and things like that as well. So it's like, you know, if somebody doesn't know kind of what's going on with, with, um, their situation and they're, they're not really sure even what the source is. 
Um, there's various ways that I can help them. Um, but it is definitely a good idea to have a specialist for something um, that is a situation that is fairy or elf in origin, because um, it can be quite a bit more delicate and complicated, um, especially because these beings are very much capable of, um, you know, things like physically manifesting um, mm -hmm. very easily, uh, you know, and obviously they can physically manifest and, and use their power um, to help people if they want to, um, or to bless people, things like that. Um, but for one thing, you don't hear a lot about that because, um, you know, it's, it's considered a, a taboo to talk about if you do receive blessings or gifts from the fairies. Um, which is something we we definitely see in the folklore is, you know, people go bragging about things and uh, um, it doesn't end too well for them because the mm -hmm. fairies don't like that. So, <clears throat> um, but, uh, you know, just um, kind of the, like I said, the similar things you see in the folklore, um, uh, anything from, you know, fairies terrorizing a person or, um, you know, outright trying to harm them um, for various reasons. Um, sometimes also kind of, a an interesting, some more interesting cases that you see are when, uh, a fairy or an elf becomes amorously inclined towards a person, yeah. um, you know, romantically interested in a person or sexually interested in a person, um, that can actually be one of the most dangerous situations. Um, they, you know, they're, they're generally not used to being told no, because they are so powerful. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and, and granted, you know, sometimes that can be a very beautiful um, uh, situation that somebody does find themselves in is, oh, wow, you know, a, a fairy loves me. Um, a fairy, you know, is my is my spirit lover or something like that. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, because they are so different to humans, um, in the way that they think in the way that they act, uh, what they expect of humans, uh, you know, in uh, how they expect humans to behave towards fairies. Um, it can be oftentimes it's much more overwhelming or outright terrifying for a person right. when a, when a fairy or an elf is um, romantically or sexually inclined to them. Um, so that is something uh, that I have dealt with quite quite a bit is helping people with that. And sometimes, um, you know, sometimes you're kind of able to, you know, take the situation and make it into something that is beneficial to the person and, um, you know, can be something that is, is quite beautiful, a beautiful spirit relationship in their life. Um, and then sometimes you just have to separate the, the human and, and the fairy, you know, and, and basically be the person, uh, who's kind of the, you know, divorce lawyer almost, uh, between the fairy and the human and, and kind of, um, you know, figure out the best way to separate the two, um, that's not going to upset the fairy too much, right. you know, uh, and then, um, you know, also be beneficial and safe for the human. Um, so it can be quite a delicate situation. Um, so, uh, you know, there's all sorts of things, too. I mean, again, because fairies, um, you know, it's a complicated subject, the kind of, um, you know, relationship that fairies and human dead has um which we we can go more into if you want but oh, wow, yeah. um <clears throat> but because it is um complicated uh you know i tell people it's it's best to err on the side of caution and not to assume that fairies are going to have the same viewpoint as humans they're not going to have the same morals as humans they're not going to yeah. see things the way that humans do um, and because the majority of them are not human and never were human. Right. So, um, you know, it, it's just best not to assume that they're going to act the way that you think would be appropriate for human behavior. Um, and so because of that, you know, it is easy to offend fairies uh, and elves. And, um, you know, that that does happen quite often, uh, because, you know, a lot of times humans don't understand the etiquette that's sort of expected of them from these beings um which is which can be quite you know sort of counterintuitive to what we might think um a good example that a lot of people know from the folklore um is the idea that you're not supposed to say thank you to a fairy right um that's something that's kind of ingrained in a lot of humans is like say thank you say thank you when people are nice to you or do something you know even just hold a door open for you or hand you a plate yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's something that's very kind of ingrained into most human society. And so, um, even something as simple as that, you know, somebody might think, oh, I said, thank you. And the fairy did something nice to me or left a little gift for me. Um, and some people might think too, that 
um, if an offense such as that happens, um, that the fairy is automatically going to retaliate very violently or something like that. And that's actually not always the case. Um, sometimes uh, it can be as simple as them going, oh, you know, she said thank you to me. So now she owes me something. She owes me a debt and I'll collect later, you know, right. and it can be when she least expects it. So, um, you know, again, it, it's just best not to assume that we can um, predict their behavior or predict what is going to offend them, things like that, which is, again, why it's it's important that there are specialists and people who um, have had the training um, and, uh, and, and a, a personal experience to, to work with these beings and sort of act as that intermediary between humans and fairies. Fascinating. Um, one, one of the things that kind of spring to mind, um, is the, the Lanashi and, and, you know, that, that kind of, um, amorous mm -hmm. slash vampiric, um, type of Irish fairy, but, but, um, when we, when we kind of look at um, similar beings from from around the world, the jinn have very much the same thing. Uh, oh yeah, you know, uh, being attracted to to human beings. The Indian yakshini, the same mm -hmm. thing. Uh, but one of the things I note, and I wonder if it's if it's a similar thing. One of the things um, I read about yakshini um, is that when an individual can say completes the um the the, the rights of, of contacting a, a, a yakshini and becoming ex a um the, the human consort of yakshini um and that's like this involves like repeating mantras like you know insane numbers of times like three hundred and eighteen thousand times yeah um, you know um but that yakshini will have like unbelievable levels of jealousy that oh yeah that they cannot have the the, the human being cannot have a, re a human relationship uh, yep. um, after that it is is it similar with with kind of um, amorous fairies is jealousy a significant thing 100 percent. yeah in fact that's that's definitely one of the um significant dangers i would say um of someone who kind of finds themselves in that situation right. um and it's definitely as you mentioned something that um i've talked to people who work with gin um, and it, it's something that comes up a lot there too. I'm, I'm aware that um, with gin, there's like a taboo a lot of times that you, you know, if you're married to a gin or um, have a gin lover, that you can't um, even hug people of uh, the opposite sex or mm. whatever the gender of that gin is, wow. um, even if it's your family. Like that's that's pretty. Wow. That's a pretty huge taboo, <laughs> right? Yeah, like yeah, you not even get to hug your family members, mm. you know. Um, but uh, but it's definitely something uh, that you see um, with fairy fairy lovers um, and you know, uh, fairies that are interested in humans for that reason is they're, they're oftentimes very jealous. Um, not always, uh, but significantly most of the time. Um, mm -hmm. and it's definitely not, uh, it's definitely not uncommon for, you know, a fairy lover or a fairy wife or a fairy husband, uh, to tell the, the partner, the human partner, you can't have any human partners now. Like you, you can't have sex with humans. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can't, um, act romantically towards humans. It's me or that's it. Um, and, uh, you know, so that is something that, um, you know, I think people kind of romanticize for lack of a better term the right. idea of like a spirit lover in general um and granted like there are definitely situations where that can be again very beautiful um a huge blessing in someone's life um and and wonderful for them uh but i think a lot of times uh, people don't understand that there are these dangers these taboos um these things can you know i mean i'm i've even um uh, my teacher once told me about a situation where somebody had a spirit lover. Um, I don't know exactly what type of spirit this was, but, um, it was a spirit lover that, uh, basically tried to kill the person's human partner. Um, you know, so that's, that's a significant danger, mm. um, to say the least. So yeah, it's definitely jealousy is a huge thing that you, um, you know, that I've seen kind of happen in those situations. Um, and it, and it shows up in the folklore too, you know, um, there's, uh, there's one story, I believe it is Danish, um, about, um, an elf woman who, uh, asks this human man to come with her back to Alfheimer, you know, the, the home of the elves. 
Um, and when he refuses, she just outright stabs him because <laughs> he tells well, her, I got to go home to my wife. Um, yeah. And she just outright stabs him. So, um, you know, that's that's a pretty extreme reaction to being rejected, you know. So, um, yeah. yeah, so that's definitely uh, definitely a huge factor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, one of the, the things that springs to mind is the the, the kind of the royal gin, um, Aisha Kandisha for North, North Africa around Morocco um, and even up to the kind of uh, up to the present day, she, she was said to have like 35,000 husbands, human husbands. Mm -hmm. um, and they were in a way kind of possessed by their love for her. Uh, yeah. Once, once they saw her, that was it. Mm -hmm. you know, that was it. And kind of a human life, a normal human life was was over uh, yeah. at that point, you know, and like they were seen kind of like wandering the streets and being crazy, like calling her name, that kind of stuff. I mean, like, um, yeah, not that's a that's um, it's funny you bring that up too because that's uh, kind of another side of the dangers as well. Um, something similar where, uh, and you see this definitely in in the folklore too, uh, with fairies is this idea that if you break a taboo. Um, that the fairy has placed upon you um, and the fairy leaves you, uh, a lot of times what happens in the stories is that the person will actually start to pine away for the fairy and, and miss them so much that they basically end up just wasting away because yeah. they don't do anything else. They just, they just kind of, you know, lay there all day being miserable and missing their fairy lover. Um, so, you know, that that's another significant danger as well is that it's this kind of idea that they're, the love of these beings is so all encompassing is so otherworldly. Um, it, it's almost like being possessed, like you said. Yeah. Um, and sometimes is outright being possessed. I mean, fairies can possess people just the way that ghosts and demons can too. Um, and, uh, it's interesting because you actually see remedies for, um, elf possession in, uh, some of the Anglo-Saxon literature and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, there, so there is this significant danger that, um, you know, if you gain a fairy lover and you're happy, um, maybe a little too happy, <laughs> you might, you know, pine away for them because you want to be with them in the other world. Or if they leave you because you break a taboo, uh, you know, you might pine away for them to the point of death, basically. So. Ricky. Um, yeah, <laughs> pretty intense. <laughs> um, and you you mentioned um, fairy relationships with with the human dead. Could you talk to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this kind of idea, th there's kind of this permeating idea that um, that I see quite a lot, where um, people have this idea that fairies are kind of just human dead. Um, and, and same thing, I see the same thing, uh, with the Scandinavian elves and this comes from a few different things. Um, and in truth it is, you know, as I mentioned before, it's a complex nuanced subject. Um, in the folklore, it's true that human dead can be seen hanging out with fairies or in fairyland after they die. Um, some of them seem to be forced there while some seem to sort of choose to be there. Um, one somewhat well-known example of this is with Bessie Dunlop. Um, who I've kind of talked about a little bit on other podcasts before, but um, she, you know, she was visited by the Queen of Elfame um, and uh, showed the Queen courtesy. So she gave her a familiar spirit, and this familiar spirit turned out to be uh, the ghost of a man uh, named Tom Reed, and he sort of became her fairy familiar, essentially. Um, and it's uh, you know, it's actually said that he was like uh, an officer, a former officer who had died at what was known at the as the Battle of Pinky. So Bessie knew um, that this was a, a formerly a former human. Um, but um, so essentially what we see here is a man who died, was brought into fairy and sort of assimilated into that world and its, its denizens. Um, there's also an association with fairies, elves and human dead because of burial mounds. Uh, burial mounds are known as places where fairies and elves either live or sort of hang out um, or use as sort of doorways into the world of fairy or Ulfamer. Um, but, uh, and this is kind of a, a big but, um, not all the fairy mounds are burial sites. Uh, you know, there's other places that are known as fairy sites that aren't burial mounds at all, such as trees, caves, 
um, you know, naturally occurring mounds and things like that. Um, there's also evidence in the folklore as well as, you know, anecdotal accounts, including in Evan Wentz's book, uh, The Fairy Faith in Celtic Countries, which is kind of um, one of the most well-known, obviously, texts yeah. about fairies, um, in which fairies are described as having never been human. Um, the writers of the Shi also predate the Tua Didanan going into the mounds, which timeline wise in the mythology predates the arrival of humans in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Um, so while there is some overlap with human dead, I think it, it would be an enormous oversimplification to say that all fairies are just dead people. Um, and just speaking for myself, uh, and my experience, I have known a fair amount of fairy beings that would be outright offended if they were called humans or human dead. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those things it has, nuance it's a nuanced relationship between human dead and fairies and elves um but it's one of those things we can't just kind of put a neat label on you know yeah yeah that that, that makes sense uh and, and that's kind of reflected in the folklore too isn't it because just yeah because it's such a mishmash um it's it's there's no definitive um answer or assertion um that one can find um, but uh, yeah, I was always fascinated by that, like in the folklore where someone is is taken to the fairy kingdom um, for whatever, whatever reason and, and sees dead relatives and what have mm -hmm. you there. You know. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's kind of a reflection of the idea that there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of options in, in the afterlife. You know, it kind of depends on uh, yeah. what your circumstances are. Or and again, like some of these people in the stories, it, it's obvious that they chose to be there in fairyland. Right. Um, you know, they're they're having a good time and <laughs> they're partying. Um, you know, and, and then there's some obviously there's some stories where those dead people, uh, you know, see their living relative. And they go, hey, get me the hell out of here, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, which was which was kind of the the deal with uh, with Robert Kirk, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, he he told his friend like, get get me the hell out of here. They kidnapped me. So, but uh, obviously, his friend didn't didn't do s such a good job getting him out of there. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're gonna do that, better find a, a friend who's not gonna who's not gonna yeah. freeze up, you know. You need, you need um, a capable friend. Yeah. yeah, yeah, capable <laughs> friend, definitely. So, um, but yeah, and I, I, again, like I was saying earlier, I just, you know, I, I try to reiterate to people that, um, yeah, there are dead humans amongst the fairies, and some of them kind of, uh, you know, are assimilated into a state of being fairy and things like that. But it's always best to assume that they aren't human just for safety's sake, you right. know, and and to kind of remember, um, again, that that unpredictability you know, in their behavior and, and their mindset. So. Um, I'm, I'm intrigued to, to know, uh, from, from your perspective and your experience, like what it's like to communicate, uh, with one of these beings or to, to see one manifest, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I obviously understand that there there's taboos around discussing specific things, um, and, and, uh, respect that. But I, I'd um, uh, my my friend um, Mademoiselle uh, Vendredi, um, yes, been on the show a few times, and she discussed what it was like to uh, to work with the gin, conjure the gin, mm -hmm. and and how different it felt, say, than working with a uh, goethic spirits. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that kind of stood out for me when I when I kind of recollect this is that she said there was this. this real sense of almost like electricity in the air like the like there was that mm. you know charged atmosphere and a sense of power um and equally you know don't put a wrong foot here you know like uh mm -hmm. so anyway it, it, it felt she, for her kind of um quite markedly different um so i, I what i'm kind of interested in is you know, what is that, like, what is the sensation like, or, you know, what is the mm. experience like from your perspective and your experience? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, well, I would definitely say, well, a few things. So, so one, I would definitely say there's, there's definitely a marked difference in the presence of a fae being than to like your average human ghost. 
um, 100%. Um, and I would say that even within the classification of fairy, um, you know, cause that, that, that's quite a large category that sure. can, that can include quite a lot of different beings, everything from, you know, uh, the, the, the queen of L fame to, um, you know, something kind of like a house spirit. That's, yeah. that's like a, you know, a tanta as we might uh, call it in Trolldom. Um, you know, so there, there's definitely within that world and, and within that categorization of spirits alone, there are differences obviously between those various beings. Um, I would say that size, like the size of the sensation, uh, when a fey being is present is, is different again than something like a human dead, you know, a human ghost. Um, it feels bigger. It feels more tangible. Um, and a lot of times they can become tangible or they can do things like, uh, without even still being without, while still being invisible, for example, they can, they can physically touch you, mm. move you, um, you know, harm you, <laughs> things like that. So, um, and they definitely do, I would say one kind of marked difference between, um, you know, a fairy being and other types of beings that I've had experience with is that they do physically manifest quite a lot. Um, oh. and with, with an ease that I would say, um, can be quite shocking. Um, you know, looking like a fully three-dimensional person, um, that's standing right in front of you, um, literally hearing their voices or, um, you know, hearing them, uh, hearing their music, um, or them singing, things like that. Uh, being able to physically move objects much more easily than say, again, like a human ghost, um, usually has, uh, um, a more difficult time doing that or right. needs to kind of summon up for lack of a better term, summon up a lot more, um, energy to do so. Um, whereas the, usually the fairies can do that kind of stuff much more easily, um, to the point where it, it can be quite scary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, um, I've definitely seen some things that, uh, made my hair stand up on end, you know? So, um, and yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely kind of see, um, what, what you were, um, your friend was talking about, um, about the gin having that kind of crackling electricity. That's definitely something I've experienced before, um, with these types of beings. Um, I would also emphasize that with fairy, um, there's, there's a lot more, it's a lot more likely that sort of a primal response that, that you might have to a lot of different types of fairy beings is, is fear. Um, or, or just this, um, you know, I think of, of a couple, uh, beings that I'm well acquainted with that I have been acquainted with for a very, very, very long time. Um, and so I'm not afraid of them. I, I trust them and, uh, you know, I consider them my allies or my, you know, whatever. Um, but when I, when that spirit or spirits enters the room or I feel their presence, it feels creepy. You know, it, it's something that it's not because I think they're going to hurt me. It's just that that is the nature of their presence is that it feels spooky. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's, it gets that chill up your spine. Yeah. Um, and again, it's not because that spirit is trying to scare me. It's, it's not trying to intimidate me. It's, it's not trying to harm me or, you know, I feel like I'm in danger. It's just the nature of their presence is creepy. Uh, and, and I think that has, like, you kind of hear about this sometimes, um, when people talk about like the high strangeness stuff with like Bigfoot or, you know, fairy encounters, um, and they kind of go, you know, there's this like primal fight or flight type of thing. And it's usually more likely flight, you know, to, to just mm -hmm. kind of run away. And I think that's something that's very common when humans, um, you know, are in the presence of fairy beings, because I think it's something that you're, that a lot of times a human's instinct is to just go, Oh God, what is that? <laughs> it's definitely not human, yeah. you know? So um, but yeah, and, and then some, some beings, uh, you know, are kind of, um, the opposite where it's not so much of like a spooky fear-based feeling, but more just this overwhelming sense of awe, um, you know, and, and that, um, again, that very otherworldly inhuman presence, 
um, but is is on the opposite end is very beautiful, very alluring. Um, and you can, you know, when you experience that in particular, it's it's obvious why there are these stories in the folklore about people who get a taste of fairy in some way. And it drives them mad because all they want is to get back to that or they yeah. want to experience that again. Um, it's very intoxicating. And even the more um, hostile beings or the more um, dangerous beings, a lot of times those can be the most alluring. Um, you know, they have, and I, I guess maybe it's something built into their, their, I don't know, their, their structure of their spirit is that they're, um, you know, I think of something like a Kelpie or something like that, you know, that has the ability to be this beautiful horse or to be a handsome man, um, in order to lure people to, to eat them basically, yeah. um, to drown them and eat them. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's also something I, I would say is cautionary in the sense that if it seems too good to be true, it probably is, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah. 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 That, that makes a lot of sense. And like, I, I think that there is a certain amount of our, our nervous systems reacting to the, the, the presence of something kind of like, so, alien, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. uh, and that it, it we you know it might as well be that kind of like saber tooth tiger running you exactly. down. Exactly, like your, your your nervous system has that reaction. Um, mm -hmm. And like some of the experiences that that I've had, I've just like felt like my knees are going to give way and like um, or I'm going to get sick. You know, like yeah, it, it, it's it'd be super intense. Um, it's very kind of um it makes me think of like Lovecraft, you know, mm -hmm. and this kind of idea of seeing something that maybe is not fully comprehensible, you know, like you can't comprehend it quite. Yeah. Um, and so the body just kind of reacts to it, uh, with fear or, mm -hmm. um, you know, like you said, that, that nervous system reaction, um, uh, of the unknown and, 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 and somewhat, you know, a sense of danger too. even, mm -hmm. even the fairies that, are more politely inclined towards humans, um, you know, are more friendly towards them or more likely to be friendly, they still have immense power, you know, and they still have that, um, that option of doing quite a lot of damage to yeah. a person or to their life, you know, so, um, and I think people, there is some sort of primal instinct that senses that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I've had that, um, I've had that thing of being touched, like, um, I was going to say had my hair been struck, but I don't have any hair but, uh, <laughs> left. But <laughs> what's left of it, I has been touched, like out in the garden. I hear my mm -hmm. name being called, that kind of thing. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Which is, um, we well, are quite a strange thing. Um, what? No, no real kind of um, sense of, of 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 kind of visceral foreboding. Just that kind of weirdness of like that's weird, that's mm -hmm. strange. I know that's not right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like, I think the experiential that that fear bit as well. I think I think a certain part of it also is that um, it it turns your world upside down because kind of your understanding of the world is utterly questioned. You know, mm. these things aren't supposed to be happening. You know, um, these things aren't supposed to exist, and then you find out they do. <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. um, that you know we're maybe not the top of the food chain like we thought we were. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, that's definitely something that I've heard people kind of say is that that feeling of um, this is something that I'm not used to, <laughs> you know, um, it's funny, because my my experience is a little bit different, because I have some of my earliest memories are of spirits and are of fairies. Um, and so it's something where not to say that they can't surprise me or jump scare me, <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, but it's something I'm definitely more used to than I think most people would be. Um, but, uh, but there is still that bodily reaction, you know, uh, again, I, uh, going back to the one spirits I was talking or the, the couple of spirits that I was talking about earlier, you know, I don't think they're going to harm me. Um, but it's still that chill on the, you know, up my spine or my hair standing on end when I know that they're present. So um, even when you're used to them, you're not, you know. 
Yeah, you're actually just you're uh, bringing me flashbacks here. Oh, <laughs> that good. Sending, sending those chills up and down my spine. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, ooh, uh, <laughs> uh, Goosebumps hour. Yeah, with totally. Rose. totally. Um, <laughs> Now, now, you mentioned um, some of these beings um, manifesting in, in in front of you. Um, if if it's okay to to do so, could could you describe what they looked like for you? Ooh, um, I can't describe in uh, in detail like their distinguishing features um, because that would probably be kind of rude <laughs> to yeah. them. Um, they do really like their privacy. That's that's one thing um, that I can say. Like the folklore is is definitely very real about um, is they don't like to be spied on. They don't like um, you know people kind of uh, telling others their names or or distinguishing features and things like right. that. Um, however, I can say um, a lot of them definitely look the way you would expect them to look. Um, I, I kind of think of the elves, especially, um, you know, a little bit. Yeah, a lot of them do very much kind of have that very, very beautiful, very luminous, um, otherworldly um you know, I mean, Kate Blanchett as Galadriel, like they nailed it, right, <laughs> you know, right. like yeah. definitely, you know, long, beautiful, glowing hair and things like that. Um, and then, you know, there are some that are quite freaky looking, you know, um, sharp teeth, um, red or black eyes, things like that. Um, there's, there's, um, there's an artist, I think his name is, he goes by like Dev Forced on, uh, on Instagram. And he does a lot of like, um, kind of fairy tale, gothy fairy tale stuff. Um, and he's done some where he depicted fairies, uh, and, and very, they're very creepy. Um, and so definitely stuff that kind of looks like that. Right. Um, and then sometimes they, they look very human, you know, um, and that's definitely something we also see in the folklore where people mm -hmm. meet a, a fairy being and they just think it's a human, um, except for the fact that there's usually something that sets them apart, um, whether it's, you know, um, a deformity such as, um, you know, they have hooves for feet mm -hmm. uh, or a tail, um, you know, um, something like that, or, uh, or just that feeling that I am not talking to a human or feeling that sense of, of fear. Um, the, the fear feeling is definitely a big one in the stories, um, that kind of tips people off, so to speak. Um, but the fact is, is like, they come in so many different shapes and sizes. Again, some of them, um, have those kind of animal features, um, the hooves or a tail or, you know, cat like eyes or something like that. Um, obviously they can shape shift. Most of them can shape shift. So, um, sometimes they can turn into a full blown animal or their natural state is more like an animal. Again, like the Kelpie thing. Um, usually the horse form is kind of their, their, their most, um, prominent form. Um, and then, um, even, even like Brian Froud, you know, like everybody knows Brian Froud's art. Yeah. A lot of them look like that. <laughs> You know, there there are a lot that have those kind of um, strange features or like the long fingers, you know, or sort of um, interesting colors to the skin that's not sort of like skin, skin tones you would see on a human, you know. Yeah. So um, it's 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 one of those things where it really does it, that categorization of fairy um, or elf really does encompass a lot, um, including, you know, animals and and things like that so um but hopefully that gives a bit of an idea <laughs> yeah no thank you that, that's that's fantastic <clears throat> i'm just reflecting on that um i never get anything chill like there's no <laughs> there's no glimmering beautiful <laughs> there's no galadriel in your no, there's none of that. repertoire yeah it's all fucking you know <laughs> turn you scary white stuff with, yeah turn you white with fear stuff, yeah but, yeah uh, yeah and sometimes even just the, the creepy stuff is just like one feature again, like, you know, they, it may look human, but wow, that sure does have a lot of teeth. You know? Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds <laughs> very like familiar. That. Yeah. And, and the kind of 100%. Like, yeah. The, the kind of elongated fingers with kind of. Yes. Know, yeah. Of, definitely. Uh, long, long hipped um, 
yeah exactly this kind of stuff yeah um anyway that's maybe a conversation for another time <laughs> uh but um well well um rose has been wonderful chatting to you i've really enjoyed this conversation me too um, it's been so much fun yeah it's been fantastic um for people who want to find out more about your your work or avail of your services follow you what's the what's the best way for them to do so sure um so i have a website it's just www.roseauroras.com um you can find out some more about me on there um all the services that i offer um are on there and uh if you want to get in touch with me you can through my little contact section on there it'll send me an email and then i'll get back to you as soon as i can um i have instagram uh it's just at rose auroras um which is also kind of the best place to follow um for like things like this you know podcast appearances or um if i'm doing classes and things like that um as i mentioned earlier i do readings uh spell work um and i also teach people i have you know uh, people who come to me who just do kind of like one-off sessions for teaching, learning scrying, um, and basic kind of seership stuff. And then I have ongoing students that are like weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, all that good stuff. So um, I have lots of options if people want to study with me or or learn just a, a thing or two and then go off on their own. Um, so uh, feel free to get in touch with me with my website or through Instagram. Um, I do have a TikTok account, but I never use it because I just cannot figure out TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. I think it's just Rose underscore Auroras, yeah. but um, I, I think I'm too old to be the TikTok generation. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. yeah. I, I can barely yeah. figure out Instagram. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm pretty active on there. And I do I do like Q&As once in a while mm-hmm. too, um, where people can like ask questions about fairy stuff, trolldom stuff, um, witchy stuff, you know, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. floats your boat and you have questions about. So yeah. Um, yeah, so that's where people can find me. Fantastic, and I, and I can personally um, vouch for um, your your reading. Your reading you gave me it was absolutely fascinating. It was fantastic. Um, Thank we, you. We, we touched on 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 it in the show. Um, yeah, really accurate and 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 illuminating. So you know, I'm so glad. No, thank you, thank you. That was fantastic. Wonderful, oh, awesome, well, thank awesome. You thank much, you Rose. so much. It's been it's been really fun and I love I love where we went in this conversation. It was really cool. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for being on Spirit Books. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Really enjoyed that conversation. I hope you guys did too. Um, do check out Rose's links in the show notes. I had a reading from her before. And uh, as I said, at the end of the show, it was awesome. Yeah, really, really good. Really interesting. So if that's something you're interested in, then do look into Rose's services. Right, that's it from me. I'm Dara Mason, and you've been listening to The Spirit Box. Take care and talk soon. <laughs>